Hey guys, Manfred Hartman here with another episode of Vapor Trails. And today we are battling in the skies over Sicily, and I am once again flying the Focke-Wulf 190A4. Now, I can hear your comments now. Didn't you just do a video on the A4? Why are we seeing this uh, plane again so soon? Yes, I did do a video on the A4, but this particular video, but the reason I wanted to bring you this particular video is it gives you a different perspective on proper play in the Focke-Wulf 190 series. With apologies to the great stand-up comedian Louis C.K., I would like to take this opportunity to launch a new segment on this channel called, Of Course, But Sometimes. In this segment, we will examine conventional wisdom in War Thunder and articulate situations in which that conventional wisdom fails. Uh, now, I just spent uh, my last commentary video explaining that a strict adherence to boom and zoom tactics is the best way to maximize the Focke-Wulf 190's potential. Now, allow me the opportunity to revise my previous statement. Of course. Of course, the pilots flying the Focke-Wulf 190's should exercise strict discipline in their fighting style and never engage in turn fighting or energy fighting tactics, which might drain their precious speed and altitude. Of course. Of course, Focke Wolf 190 pilots should fly in straight lines and never follow their targets in evasion maneuvers, even if you miss on the initial dive. Of course. But sometimes, sometimes in the right situation, you can successfully borrow from the Energy Fighter's playbook to turn an energy advantage into a club, which you can use to bludgeon your foes into submission. And I hope this video will give you a good example of how that can happen. At this point we have completed our side climb and are heading back towards the center of the map when we spot our first customer for the day, a P-63. Now this P-63 appears to be the highest member of the opposing team, so we need to eliminate him before we can get down to ground level where the rest of their team is. He goes into a climb to try to spike me from below, so I point my nose up and enter a stall maneuver, engaging my flaps to control my plane at low speed and we cut the engine to tighten the loop and kill our flaps so that we can pick up speed again. This is a maneuver that I pull all the time in BF-109s but refrain from generally in Focke-Wulf 190s because it can drain a lot of your altitude and speed. Now this P-63 does exactly the wrong thing which is go into a high bank with an enemy diving down on top of him and we score a critical hit. Now normally we would continue in a straight line to preserve as much energy as possible, but we see this P-38 harassing one of our teammates and decide to lend some assistance. Now, at, during the dive we spot a Focke Wolf 190 being harassed by a P-47, and I decide to take a couple of speculative shots on the pass. Uh, unfortunately we do not eliminate the target, but we score a solid hit, and more importantly discourage him from staying on our teammates 6 o'clock. As we look over our shoulder to check our 6, we notice that that P-38 is still all over our 109 teammate, so we decide to loop over to lend him some assistance, and as you can see, we were awarded the kill for that P-63 we critted earlier for our second kill. Now this pilot elucidator knew exactly what to do. He knew that he had assistance from above, and he knew that this P-38 was target locked on him. So he banks directly below me, forcing the P-38 to present his broadside to my guns, and allowing me to get a very easy kill. And I really have to give a shout out to elucidator here. Uh, kudos to you, that was beautifully choreographed and executed. And with that, we achieve our second kill for the day. Now, of course, normally, after a dive like that, we would continue to fly straight and uh, turn all of that speed that we have on back into altitude. Uh, but in this particular situation, with uh, the entirety of the enemy team below us, um, we find it better idea to turn back towards the enemy and try to score some more kills and end this match. On that note, let's skip ahead a bit to the next engagement. So here we are just a minute or so later, and we look below us to see a Focke Wolf 90 going to a head-on pass uh, with a P-47 and uh, losing that engagement. Um, so this uh, player um, obviously has some skill, 
um, if he can beat a fuck wolf 90 in a head-on pass. So we need to get down there and eliminate him. Uh, at this point we are cutting our engine to lose some of our speed. The P-47 has passed beneath us, uh, so we are going to uh, turn back towards it and engage him from behind. Uh, and that is, you always want to give yourself the best angle of attack when you're coming in for a dive. This P-47 sees us coming and goes into a sharp bank to try and avoid our guns, but we pull off an absolutely beautiful deflection shot there and pilot snipe him for the kill. And uh, that's how we pick up our third kill for the day. Once again, we turn our nose to the sky, avoiding all lateral movements while we turn all of that speed that we have back into altitude. At this point in the match, there is only one enemy plane remaining, so we have to go into search mode to find him and complete this match. So let's uh, skip ahead to the end. As I'm heading towards the enemy runway uh, to begin my search for the last player, I check the scoreboard and I happen to notice that I am the only player remaining on my team with any air kills. Uh, the remaining enemy player has two kills that he has racked up, which means that he must be at least moderately skilled of a player, and the remaining players on my team between them have not killed a single air target. Uh, which means that the pressure is really on me to ensure that this uh, match is completed successfully. Um, the players on my team are probably fairly new to the game just based on the fact that they have yet to score any points. So fast forward a few minutes and we are now the last remaining player on our team. That uh, JU-87 which just crashed into the ground was the last plane on our team flying. Uh, there was a BF-109 heading towards the runway, which uh, engine died and didn't make it, and we had another player that crashed uh, trying to land. So we are alone against this one enemy player, and I decide not to take any chances, and we engage the Avenger order so we can find where the last remaining player is. Uh, now that we've spotted him um, and he is below us, uh, we're feeling fairly comfortable in our ability to finish this match. but. Um, we are, since we are the last remaining player on our team, um, we're going to need to approach this uh, cautiously and uh, not make any boneheaded mistakes. Now notice that I do not dive directly at the target once I have spotted him. I apply discipline and patience and wait for him to pass below me. And the reason for this is that when you approach your enemy from behind, you maximize your time on target, giving you the greatest opportunity to land hits on your boom. It appears the P-51 is oblivious to our approach, so we are just very carefully angling ourselves to give us the best possible approach angle, and then we let loose with the guns. Now, we do not end up achieving a killing blow, and I ended up getting very frustrated uh, and not paying attention to what I was doing, and I passed right in front of the guns of the P-51 as I exited my boom. That was a big mistake. Um, it was a lack of situational awareness on my part, but regardless, uh, we end up uh, achieving our fourth kill and ending the match. So the results for the match. Uh, we end up in first place with four kills. Um, we achieve a boatload of awards and we bring home 71,000 Silver Lions, which is really not bad for a tier 2 plane in a single match. The Falkwolf 190, while it is the quintessential boom and zoomer in the game of War Thunder, you can apply energy tactics uh, if you have the altitude advantage and uh, you want to use that to bludgeon your foes into submission. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please click the like and subscribe button below. And remember, get high, stay high. That's the winning strategy.